Hello, and welcome to another episode of Virtual City Hall. Today I'm visiting Ward 8, and we have with us Councillor Henderson. You need Hi. to say hello before we go. <laughs> and we also have Ward Reporter Allison. Hello. Thank you both for joining us. At City Hall School, we learned that a councillor's job is to listen, to learn, and decide, and the decisions they make give us a really good quality of life here. Councillor Henderson has told me that his favorite subject in school was drama. And the very first job he had, he was kind of like Indiana Jones because he was actually on an archaeological dig. Councillor Henderson loves pets. He has two dogs and three and a quarter cats. What's with that? Three and three quarter cats. Yes. One of them, one of them is missing a leg. Oh, I see. Well, that's a so, wonderful. So I, think, I think of him as three quarters of a cat. He thinks himself as a whole cat, though. <laughs> Lovely. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Allison now so she can ask her questions. All right. Councillor Henderson, what would you say is the most reporting, rewarding part of your work? You know, um, well, I, I always say when we do this in the with the class there that I love I love like meeting with you guys. So that's the most fun part of my work. I think that for me, it's about, you know, we get to like make and really right now, it's even more like this, the kind of big picture decisions on what our city is going to be like in the future. And that's sort of cool. That's really being able to create and imagine what the next Edmonton is going to be like and being able to make decisions around that is, is, is exciting and fun. And that's what feels really useful. Yeah, that's good. What would you say was the biggest, would be the biggest challenge? Do you know, the really hard thing is you can't make everybody happy and you want to, you know, that no matter what decisions we make, someone's not going to be happy with it. And, uh, you know, we're there to try and to try and do things, to try and do things that people want. So it's really, really hard when you know that you have to make a tough decision and it's not going to necessarily be, some people are going to be upset with you. And um, I find that hard. Yeah. What did you want to be when you were my age? Do you know, I've had this question before and I don't remember. I have no idea. It has gone from my memory. I'm sure I wanted to be something, um, but I honestly can't remember. It's I, I, I know a, a disappointing answer, um, but I, but I don't remember. If I remember it, I would tell you. I just don't. <laughs> what three words would you would you use to describe a great leader? Boy, you know, I think when they have to be able to listen and understand, it's not just about doing what you want. It's it's trying to get a sense of what's happening out there and. And then getting all the information you can. Um, and I think building trust. I, I think uh, it's very hard to lead if people don't trust where you're going, if people don't know, uh, don't believe what you're doing. Because you need, it's not just about going out and doing it yourself. You've got to bring other people with you. So, so it's about giving them the confidence that you know what you're doing um, and, and that, you, that they can also, um, understand to get excited about the same vision uh trust trust is really really important to good leadership i think and uh and that means staying connected and understanding and listening and and not just not just spouting off yeah that's really important during this time of isolation what is something that brings you joy to have um Boy, that's a that's a hard one. I've I, I confess I've had it pretty lucky, you know, because all of my work there's not much I haven't been able to do at home. So um, my work is pretty much the same. I still have my work, and I know that's been really hard on people that don't have their work. Uh, and and I can get out and about and enjoy the outdoors and the fresh air and do a lot of the stuff that I was doing before. I mean, it's I sort of miss being able to like get together with people, but I'm spending all day you know, sitting and sitting right where I'm sitting right now talking to people. So that for me hasn't really changed. I know that's been really hard on a lot of people that they've become disconnected. But for me, I've been I've been lucky that way. So much of my life has just become this and this is pretty good. Yeah, it would be hard to be isolated and, yeah. and disconnected. Also, there are so many caring citizens in our city. Tell us about some of the hashtag YEG cares examples you've seen in our ward. Um, but you know, I don't, uh, I mean, I know of some of, I, I know there's some really cool stuff happening out of the community leagues. Um, Queen Alexandra Community League, for instance, I think is really, they put out a call to people 
one, anybody needed help, needed groceries, whatever. And they also put out a call for volunteers and create a web page. And I think they had 70 people come forward and offer help um, so that, you know, you could go out and you could get groceries for people who can't, or you can support them in other ways. The other cool idea that they that they thought of, but we haven't figured out a way to do it yet, but we're trying to figure out a way we can help them do it is to maybe go out and say, look, if you've got old computer, computer equipment that you can't be using right now, um, is there a way that that could be cleaned up? So, cause a lot of people, you know, we can do this cause we have computers, but not everybody does. And, uh, if there's a way to get some of that equipment out to people that may not have as much, um, the other fun one, and I actually don't know where it played out, but one of the, um, one of the notoriously or, or famously rowdy, uh, fraternities at the university, um, got in touch with me and said, we really want to be able to help. We want to be able to volunteer in the community. We want to be able to connect in with the um, connect in with the community. And can you help us do that connection? So I connected them through to the city and I connected them through to the community uh, league in the area. And I assume that's gone well. I didn't hear all I got to do was put them together. So I think there's a lot of people out there that are just really wanting to help and figure out how they can help. And um and uh, I think there's stories about that all over the place, you know, that uh, I think a lot of the communities, again, and it's possible now in a way that wouldn't have been five or six years ago, because everybody's linked in a way, and we can get in touch with each other as a community in a way by doing this. We couldn't have done that five years ago. Um, so a lot of people are connecting that way in their local area and their at their local home with their neighbors. Yeah, that's really great. Um, what do you hope we all learn or take away from this experience? And what advice do you have for kids like me? Well, I think, you know, what I would say is, you know, we, you know, my lifetime, we haven't had this happen um, to us. Um, but, you know, the generation before us did have it happen. In some ways, we knew it was coming and we got through it. I think it's going to be easier to get through this in the last big pandemic, because last time they had this, there were no vaccines. They didn't even know what a vaccine was. So it went on for a whole bunch longer. So I think what I would want is to say, you know, we'll get there and people have to have some patience. I think everybody's doing really, really well right now. You know, we actually looked, I looked at our numbers yesterday and we had no new cases in the city of Edmonton and that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. So I think it's just, you know, I think it's, uh, I think that's because the communities come together in a really cool way. So I think it's a, about patients. I also think, you know, it's interesting. We had a meeting today of one of our city committees. It's looking at what happens next. And it was around the environment. And one of the things that we re and I'd love to hear from people if they have any thoughts on this, is that we've all figured out a different way of living in the last month that we never would have imagined for ourselves before. And there's some bad downsides to that, but there's probably some interesting things as well, where we're going, hey, this isn't quite as bad as I thought it was, or you know, I'm getting out there and walking more and biking more. I've spent not a lot of time in my car, you know, those kind of things that are just new habits. And I think that could be a really cool thing that we can find out from this that may be about a different kind of future. It'd be nice to go back to the things where everybody can relax a bit and not worry. But I'm guessing we may be able to go back to a better place rather than just going back to what we had before. I hope that's what it is. And, you know, you guys, you know, you asked, going back to the very first question you asked me, it's about building the city that you're going to get to run, not the one that I get to run. And we need to get that right so that we can hand you off a city that is one that you're going to really want to live in and a quality of like, you know, way of living that you really like. Yeah, that's a great answer. Well, that was a great interview. Thank you to you both. I always end each of these episodes with a challenge. And because of <laughs> Councillor Henderson's background in drama, it's a drama challenge. So suggesting you take some time maybe with your family today to do some acting out. Have you played charades before? So a game where you can't use your voice, you have to use your actions and mime. You could do song titles or animals or characters or virtually anything. I think I might just try charades with Allison right now. Are you ready, Allison? Yep. Two words. Second word. Bye. First word. Happy. Um, good. Yes, you got it. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you, guys. That was great. Thanks, Allison. Bye. Bye.